Psalms 132. A song of degrees. Now, I'm going to say that Nathan could be the author of this song. 2 Samuel 7 is when David tells him his plans for the, te for the temple. And Nathan said, tells him, said, well, do what the Lord, you know, what the Lord's heart. And the Lord comes to Nathan that night and says, no, you go speak, about, you go speak to David. And then you get, you know, how David can't do it because his hands are bloody with war. And then you get the sure mercies. So this matches Nathan's, I would say, his prayer to God for David. Lord, remember David and all his afflictions. So it was not David. I don't know if his is a pronoun, but that, that's not writing for yourself. If I was writing something about me, I wouldn't say his. i say mine. And it's talking about the pain and suffering and the trials and tribulations of everything that David has gone through. Which is much. How he swear unto the Lord. And it's not cussing. It's making an oath. And vowed unto the mighty God of Jacob. And you got to be careful, Solomon says, what you say, because God will hold you to it. Surely I will not come into the tabernacle of my house. All right, tabernacle, it's a biting place. Now this is not the tabernacle of God been in the wilderness that Moses made. This, he's talking about his dwelling. Nor go up into my bed. I'm not going to go home and I'm not going to get no sleep. I'm going to do something. I will not give sleep to my eyes or slumber to my eyelids. This is a kind of fast. Not of food and drink. But I am going to give myself up for sleep. That is not a priority. An oath and a charge that I'm going to make to God is more important than me falling asleep. Some people in America today would make an oath like this. You know, it would read like, I will not give myself to get up. And being awake to my eyelids. You know, Lord, I'm just going to go fall asleep and, and stay asleep. That's what the church is today. She's asleep. David's awake for the Lord. Until I find out a place for the Lord. And habitation for the mighty God of Jacob. Now, what did God do for David on this oath? David counted the men of, of Israel, angered Joab, angered God. God provoked him. Satan provoked him. And God sent an angel to, to Nathan, I believe it is. He says, listen, you got one of three things you can choose. And that verse that I like, he says to the prophet, he says, let me fall in the hands of the Lord, not in the hands of man, because man is cruel and God is merciful. So God sends the angel to the Lord with pestilence. He starts destroying. God tells David, I've had enough. Stays the angel. He says, I want you to go over there to the threshing floor. I want you to offer a burnt offering. David goes over there. I believe his own end. I think I got the name correct. He purchased the field. He purchased the animals. He purchased the cart, what they were using, to make an altar. The, it is recorded in your Bible, the purchase of this spot. That David has a title deed recorded in your Bible today that you could take to the United Nuts in New York and say, it's, it land is Israel. Get that mosque 
the dumb of the rock out of there. In God's word that you do not believe, it is recorded that's the place that David purchased. That is where the tabernacle was. And your Bible records it. David purchased the land. Lo, we heard of it in Ephrathah. Ephrathah. However you want to say it. That's Benjamin. Genesis 35, 16, 35, 19, 48, 7. Ruth 1, 2. Micah 5, 2. And Matthew 2, 6. That's one, and that Micah 5, 2 and Matthew 2, 6, that's where it speaks about uh, uh, Bethlehem of Ephod. And it speaks about the Lord Jesus Christ. We heard of it at Ephod. We found it in the fields of the wood, forest. <coughs> we will go into his tabernacle. We will worship at his footstool. And that's the earth in the Bible. God speaks as the earth is his footstool. Imagine how big God is when, when he put his feet up there on the earth. Imagine how big his throne is. Have you ever seen a, a, a footstool compared to, to the chair that it belongs to? The chair is twice, if not three times as, as, as size as the footstool. Arise, O Lord, you must be sitting, and to thy rest, the place that David is going to prepare for. David is not only looking to purchase the land, which he does, he's looking to build the ark of thy strength. He's looking for the place to put the ark. Right now it's sitting in curtains. It says that in, in 2 Samuel 7, he says, David looked out of his house. He says, Lord, I've got, I've got cedar all around me. It's beautiful. And you're down there in a bunch of curtains. That is just plain wrong. God, that is wrong. I have more beauty and I have more things than, than you. You're down in a bunch of curtains. That tabernacle has been moving around, all kinds of things and stuff like that. It's not even where it's supposed to be right now because, because God hasn't revealed to them yet where he's going to put his name. He will through David. David saying, I want to put that ark where it's going to pull the staves out and Lord, you just come on in and you stay. You see why God forgave David? you see why you have the sure mercies of David? Can you picture anybody else thinking about God as much as David did? Let thy priest be clothed with righteousness. Not, not, the, not the priestly garments we wear. He said, let the priest be righteous. I believe Solomon had to kick some priests out. Of the office because they were unrighteous in their deeds. You know what's going to happen later on? They're going to have priests of Baal. Unrighteousness. David says, not only clothe the priests like God, clothe them with righteousness, being right, being holy unto God. And let thy saints, uh oh, uh oh, shout for joy. Don't you ever hear a dead man shout for joy? See, I grew up in a church where saints were dead people. After they, they're dead, then they look upon your life and see if you're worthy to be a saint. So if you got a Saint Bernard, that's a that's a dead dog. See, the Bible tells... You know why the Roman Catholic Church does not want you to read the Bible? Because you'll be right here. Well, wait a minute. How can saints shout for joy? We've got a whole bunch of dead saints in our church. Mr. Priest, do we call father that has no children? Why does the Bible say saints shout for joy? Well, 
what you're doing is you're not reading the Bible. You need to close that and listen to the traditions that we will teach you. A bunch of lies and baloney that will hand that will feed it to you. Don't you open a Bible because you'll find out how wicked we are. Saints are people are alive. Who is David talking about the saints here? What group of people? Jews. You know how many saints the Roman Catholic Church killed under Adolf Hitler? Uh oh. You know how many saints the Roman Catholic Church has killed on this side of Calvary under the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ because of the Bible? You know how many people have had a Bible and been considered a heretic and died under the church? Those are saints. When they died, they became homebound. Saints are one are people that are alive. I am a saint. I am a priest too. The Bible says, "Go up to some guy wears his shirt on back." I, I'm priest. Well, I'm priest and saint, Stanley Hayward, and I have a PhD. <laughs> okay, had some fun with that one. For thy servant David's sake, turn not away the face of thy anointed. Now remember, if this is Second Samuel seven, and Nathan is right in his prayer. About David, David buying that land pipe hasn't even happened yet. Now, I could be wrong about Nathan, but it sounds like in Second Samuel seven, a little bit after that, maybe that night. Look, and if it is that night, and God says, Nathan, you need to go back to tell David he can't do. I, I I've seen his heart. I know what he wants to do, but he can't do it. And you go back and read 2 Samuel on your own and see what God does. God promises David a seed that he's going to raise up to build that temple. And you read how it says that we're going to read even further in this chapter. He's going to promise him the Messiah that's going to sit on David's throne. Luke chapter 1. Where were we? And for David say, turn not away the face of thy anointed. David was anointed to be king. Turn not away the face of thy anointed. You know what anointed means also? It means Messiah. Jesus Christ. Christ, it means anointed. I wonder how you, how, how you can read that. David or the Messiah? The faith. You know, Jesus died outside of Jerusalem. I wonder what way he was facing when he died. The Lord has sworn in truth. Oh, not only sworn, but in truth. Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. God can never lie unto David. Now, see, 11, I don't know if your Bible has it, is a paragraph mark. Verses 1 through 10 is the prayer, I believe, Nathan. But follow along in, in verse 11 on, you see what happens later on in 2 Samuel 7. The Lord has sworn in truth unto David. He, God, will not turn from it. Of the fruit of thy body, David, will I, God, set upon thy throne. Well, man doesn't have a fruit. He has a seed. But that seed will produce a fruit of the woman. So I was wondering why man wears fruit of the looms and woman don't. Yes, that's why right there. God is going to give David a child of all the children he had. And there's going to be one that is going to be seated upon the throne. Adonijah tried to assert authority. Oh, I have a big party, get everybody to go, hey, I'm the king. Oh, no, you're not. 
Absalom tried to assert the authority over war. I'm the king. For a while, but God didn't recognize it. You're dead. Hanging in a tree. If thy children. Ooh, look at that. Thy children. More than just Solomon. Will keep my covenant and my testimony. That I shall teach them. Their children shall also sit upon thy throne forevermore. Well, there's a problem because in Jeremiah, we're going to, as, as we're reading the Bible through, we're in Jeremiah, there's going to be a place that's going to say, oh, earth, earth, right, this man childish. Jeconiah, I believe is the name, but I can't be sure about that. But the last king to sit, well, wait a minute. Well, if that's the last king, how does Jesus Christ, the king of kings? Go over there in Matthew 1 and, and Luke chapter 3 and read where Jesus Christ comes from. It comes from David. Joseph comes Solomon, David. Mary goes a boy named Nathan, then David. You know how well David respected Nathan, the one went to his face and pointed the finger and said, Thou art the man! David said, you know what? I like that so much. I'm going to name one of my boys after you. And that boy's name happens to show up in Mary's line. How do you like that? Will also sit upon thy throne evermore, forevermore, excuse me. You know who that is? That is the Lord Jesus Christ. That is the line from Abraham all the way through the thrones that Satan stopped at uh, whatever his name is. I can't think of it. And that God put back on through the virgin birth of Mary. And it says in Genesis 3.15, the seed of the woman. The woman don't have a seed. And it says in verse 11, the fruit. The man don't have the fruit. The woman has the fruit. The man has the seed. <laughs> Look at that. Did you see that? Did you catch that? For the Lord has chosen Zion. That's Mount Zion. That's Jerusalem. He has desired it for his habitation. This is my rest, God says. Well, there's anything but rest going on over there right now. Man, there's fighting and there's children walking with AK-7s and bombs going off. You know, you sit in a cafe and some guy walks in there and, you know, opens up the wrong zipper and kaboom. Can you imagine that? He gets some guy over there, some zipper head. He, I mean, he, he, he's got a body bomb him, goes in the bathroom, pulls the wrong, wrong lever and blows himself up in the john. <laughs> oh, God. I wonder what Allah would say to him, you fool. <laughs> yeah, you can laugh at those religions. God has chosen Zion, Mount Zion, Jerusalem. They don't even call it Jerusalem today. I forget what, it, what it's called on the map. This is my rest forever. Well, you wouldn't think that today. Here will I dwell, for I have desired it. And look at all the messes going on over there today. Even the Jews don't go over there three times a year like they're supposed to. Excuse me. Do you see the church age is not even in the Bible? You tell me that God is dwelling there right now? He's angry with Israel. He's put them off for a little bit. 
We are the, we are the stumbling stones for Israel. We're, we're believing the God that Israel is supposed to believe in. And then you're going to have Satan and the Antichrist over there in the temple that's going to be built. I will abundantly bless her provision. That means supplies, food, grain, harvest, meat. I will satisfy her poor with bread. That's all in the millennium. That's all when Jesus Christ came the first time. Did he feed him? What did he feed him with? Bread. He didn't feed him with hot dogs. He fed him with bread. He said in Isaiah, um, excuse me, in Psalms 132, verse 15, I will satisfy her poor with bread. So he gave them bread, not hamburgers. I will also clothe her priest with salvation. Well, that wasn't during Christ's time. All right. Let's look at something here for a minute. He says, find a place. Verse 6. Uh, verse 7, we will go into his tabernacle, we will worship at his footstool. Arise, O Lord, unto thy rest, thou and the ark of thy strength. Let thy priests be clothed with righteousness, and let thy saints shout for joy. Here's God's answer, verse 12. For thy children will keep my covenant and my testimony that I will teach them. Their children should also sit upon thy throne forever. For the Lord has chosen Zion. He has desired for his habitation. That's exactly what we saw here. Arise, O Lord, unto thy rest, thou in the ark of thy strength. This is my rest. You see it? See how they're both matching? This is now answering the prayer of Nathan. I believe it is Nathan, but the prayer. Here will I dwell. Don't you see where it says dwelling? It's important. Get this. Get this. You need to get this. I will abundantly bless her with provisions. God is there. I will clothe her priests with salvation. What was the prayer? Verse 9. And let thy priests be clothed with righteousness. Verse 16 says salvation. You know what your salvation is? It's the righteousness of God. Through Jesus Christ you just got the definition of righteousness in the same chapter you got the definition of salvation the only way you can be saved is by being righteous and the only way you can be righteous is by Jesus Christ today the Messiah what's the Bible say for there is none righteous no not one but there is God in order to be saved, you need God's righteousness to be salvation and to be righteous. The 2 verses 9 and 16. And for her saints, see, see, verse 9, and let thy saints shout with joy, see, 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 and her, jo and her joints, and her saints shall shout a love. That is an answer to the prayer, and salvation has been changed with righteousness, and righteousness has been changed with salvation. You've been given a Bible dictionary. A Bible dictionary is inside your Bible. So when you say thy salvation, it's thy righteousness in my saved. So that's a little nice thing we just learned. There will, there will I make the horn of David the bud, and the horn is power. Male 
males with horns, the animals that have horns, will battle out for territory for the female. To bud. To flower. To flourish. Horn in the Bible is strength. It's power. When Daniel speaks about the horns, the strength, the power, the mighty, the military strength, I have ordained a lamp for my anointed. Christ is the lamp. He's the light. We read in Psalms 119 about the lamp and about the light. Thy, thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. His enemies. Then will I make the horn of David the bud. I've, I have ordained a lamp for my anointed. His enemies will I clothe with shame. When they stand before that God at the great white throne judgment. Everyone who's been in the United Nations, everyone who's over there in the Middle East now, everyone who's been against the Jew, everyone that put Christ on that cross, everyone that rejected Christ. But upon himself shall his crown flourish. I know somebody who's going to get the seat of David, the throne of David, and he's going to wear a crown. The Bible says he's going to wear crowns. And David's going to be the prince. Now, can you just see how happy that David will be when he is there in the land and Jesus Christ, the Messiah, is right there and David is under him. Do you just see how happy David will be? And there he will be in the land that he purchased. And can you imagine God at the great white throne judgment, everyone who fought over that land called Jerusalem, and he just opens up his Bible and says, David, give me here for a minute, please. Would you read to them the title grant one more time? Lord, write it to a million people. I don't care. Will you read the title D, who it belongs to, and what you did to get that to that person? And that's what's going to happen. The title deed is recorded in your Bible by David. This is the prayer, I believe, of Nathan about David in 2 Samuel 7 when he wanted to do something for God. And God answered from 12 to 18. And then this is what I believe happened. Nathan went back to David and told Nathan, I told David to go back and read 2 Samuel 7. About the wondrous things of the sure mercies of David. And about that son he promised him. I'll leave that to your own writing. If you want, you can go back through these videos. We went through 2 Samuel 7. And you can go through what we what we studied that, that time, that night. Oh, the song of degrees. That David got his prayer answered more than he ever expected. Can you imagine when, when, when Nathan told David, you can't do it? Can you imagine David's jaw just dropping? Oh, Lord, why not? And then his, his, his getting that joy, my son's going to do it. Well, I'm going to I'm going to stockpile goods and, and building materials. I'm going to have a part in that thing. You imagine what David was like that? And then can you imagine David sitting in the temple with the mercy with the holies of holies open and the mercy seat and there is the Lord Jesus Christ with the crown of David. Can you just imagine how happy David would be that day? 
And he'd come over and say, pull his great, 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 great grandchildren, the, the, you know, the kings that did do right. Say, see that spot right there? You see under his throne? You know, I think there is in the Roman Catholic Church say under that altar there they have it's supposed to be Peter's bones or something there with Peter. You know what David's gonna say? You see in the throne where Jesus Christ is? If you if you when you wait where he is, that's where I offered oxen. And right there is where the angel of the Lord stood there. Over there was Onan and his sons squaking in their in their boots because of that angel there holding the sword, but that's right where I that's where I purchased it. Right there where he's sitting is where I purchased. Here, let, let me show you where it says it. Let me show you where it says it. Right there. You know, that's the God that told me I couldn't build it because I shed so much blood in the land. And that's where I had part in the temple. I didn't build the temple, but I bought it. And there is my throne given to God. And can you imagine how angry David will be when he finds out how many of his brethren did not serve God? He says, verse 12, If thy children will keep my covenant and my testimonies, that I shall teach them, their children shall also sit upon thy throne for it. There is a time when that if they didn't do it. You're going to see David again. And how happy he's going to be. Imagine David, the, the, the Jew, be singing hymns about Jesus Christ. That's what we're going to do in heaven. That's what we're going to do in glory. That's what we're going to do in New Jerusalem. We're going to sing about the Lamb. Worthy is a lamb. That's why the Bible says, not of works, least any man should boast, because we're, it's not going to be singing about ourselves. You imagine, you know, some people think, you know, what a day that will be when I get to heaven, you know, of all the candles I've lit. And, and, no, 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 no. It's about the one who died on the cross. Who wore a crown of thorns. He exchanged his crown for thorns. And in victory over death and hell, he's giving crowns. And not only that, we are going to witness this whole thing as Jesus Christ takes the goat nations and casts them off into the lake of fire. We're going to watch David sit up there, walk up those steps, clean that place out like so many kings did. Or maybe he build a new one. I don't know. We're going to watch him call David up. David's going to bow the knee and give him his crown. And Jesus is going to sit down. Where he ought to be sitting. They didn't even let Jesus Christ die where he where he will be sitting. They took him out on a hill called Calvary. In the millennium, there's only one hill, and that's Mount Zion. Above all the world. As we close. Oh Lord my God. I in awesome wonder consider all the worlds thy hands have made. I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, thy power throughout the universe displayed. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to how great thou art, how great thou art, 
Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. And when I think that God his Son not sparing sent him to die, I scarce can take it in That on the cross My burden gladly bearing He bled and died To take away my sin Then sings my soul My Savior God to thee How great thou art How great thou art then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. When Christ shall come with shout of acclamation and take me home, what joy shall fill my heart. Then I shall bow in humble adoration.